right, Hayden, take it away. <laughs> what? <laughs> Am I really? I didn't want to intro. I was kidding. Five minutes. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are live in five, four, three, two. I'm not doing it. <laughs> What's going on, you guys? It's Five Minute Men. We try to solve the world's problems in five minutes. We just draw them randomly from a hat. I just do the second half and then tell yeah. to edit it together. Just like, <laughs> hit, that, hit that subscribe button below. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't subscribe, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> um, so Tyler, what are we talking about today on Five Minute Men, the podcast, where we try to solve the world's problems in five minutes? So taller than all of you. Wow. Play with me. <laughs> <He's a bit laughs> <taller than> Slower. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hello, guys. Yeah. We're the five minute men. We're the five inch men. <laughs> I broke my I'm share. I'm the tallest of the five minute men. <laughs> I'm just going to chill like this, honestly. All right. I'm just vibing, bro. Wave your hand real small. All right, so our last podcast got, what, 40 views, 50 views, hopefully? I don't know. To all, all of y'all, um, uh, you fucking rule, and you're probably weird and bored. Um, <laughs> that's how you fucking found us. Um, but last time, we talked about aging. And we I came up with solved aging. We solved aging, yes. Uh, Cutter, actually, ultimately solved aging. Mm-hmm. By um, what was it a plan or it was more of an idea? It was more just it was like more of an accepting of an aging. So it was kind of right. like a it was a plan to do nothing. Basically, yeah. got it. Except Seinfeld, the plan. You know, yeah, since the then plan. I actually haven't seen one single old person out in the world. So, hmm. do you think it's working? I think I think <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, and then my plan was very morbid. It was to create a committee to determine the value of somebody's life. And Tyler was basically, uh, he came up with a vaccine, some sort of pig stem cell medicine. Yeah, an injection. Yes, the, the pig injection. What are we talking about today? What's in our white fedora? The white fedora of chance. I'm not, I can't look. So I'll fuck. I was going to cheat. All right, today on Five Minute Men, we're going to be solving. It's upside down. <laughs> Wage what inequality. Wage inequality. Ooh. What does that mean? Between everything? <laughs> the, white, the white man doesn't know what wage inequality is. Basically. So it's the idea right. that a man makes more than a woman. Okay, so specifically that. Yeah, I, I would also, I don't know. You could, because you could expand it out to like wealth inequality in general, and then we'd be talking about like the ninety-nine and the one percent. What does oh, Gary yeah. make more than I do? I don't understand. Do what? So, what does Gary make more than I do? Yeah. Wealth inequality. Mm-hmm. Well, because you're a woman. Nah, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he deserves to make more than you. <laughs> so, what is so exact? Yeah. So, I guess getting into this, what so wage inequality? What is this? What is it at right now? It's obviously gotten better, right? It was at like 70. 70, 70 cents on the dollar. Cent? I figured I'd get some stats like ESPN. Ooh, one of the most important economic stories of the past couple of decades is the rise of economic inequality in the United States and around the world. This is a big problem. It's gone up. Okay. Yeah. So, do we want to that? open that up to economic inequality? Yeah. I. I think you could do gender or just economic inequality across the board. Uh, economic inequality is the unequal distribution of income and opportunity between different groups in society. It is a concern in almost all countries around the world, and often people are trapped in poverty with little chance to climb up the social ladder. Yeah, dude, super easy problem. Yeah. Super easy how come, problem. How come they haven't fixed this yet? Do we need more than – do we need just five minutes? I mean, like, really? Yeah. Do we just – can we just submit this to, like, the IRS or the president? To the Fed. <laughs> Yeah. Like, hey guys, we, we fixed it. We're, we're yeah. good. We You're welcome. It. Set a timer for five minutes. Dude, I don't know how to solve this at all. We have the <laughs> freaking economist over here, Hayden. Nope. I'm, I don't have a degree. What are you talking about?
Oh god, there's only two minutes. Fuck. Time's up. Yeah, for having an economics degree, I wrote down surprisingly little. I have no fucking idea how to fix this. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> All right, so wage inequality. In specifics, gender wage inequality. The only way I could think of to remove wage inequality from our basically from our economic work system. You're not going to be able to remove it in all aspects of it, everything. Nothing's going to ever be perfect, but maybe it's in the more mainstream work environment, such as like corporate America or anything. I would just say that you just kind of, you would just to build it basically off a pure meritocracy. And the only way I can think of doing that is removing genders from resumes or applications or any kind of, I mean, basically where you can be hired without knowing really, I mean, what sex you are. I think that's very important. Um, I, because then it's, uh, it eliminates any kind of chance of bias based on that. Um, obviously that would have to come with some sort of federal regulation. Um, another thing I thought that maybe for, obviously I don't think it would work for everyone, especially, uh, probably entry level jobs and such, but maybe for corporate divisions, um, you know, actors go have stage names and such, so maybe people just adopt um, work personas and work names. Um, perhaps you just change your name to a John Doe or a, you know, a Chris Pine or just some kind of generic kind of sounding, like good sounding name that you have. And it could be even generic as to be where you could even tell the gender from that name. Um, that way, projects attached to you can be published under that persona, um, can be published under that work. That work is still credit to you in the end, but as far as like you actually having to reveal who you are or the person behind that um, project, your CEO, I mean, your CEO could just be this generic persona of, you know, they can be fired, they can be based on everything that that person's actually doing, but they are kind of protected behind that identity. Sure, rumors and social media can get out. You can learn that the persona for Elon Musk is a man from South Africa all of a sudden, you know, but beyond that, you know, by that point though, he's already, he or she has already made it to that point in the corporate ladder where she's, she hasn't been limited by it as such. Essentially converting, trying to, I guess, push us more to a pure kind of uniform meritocracy to where we really are um, valued by our achievements, by our production, by what we actually put into society rather than, you know, the wage inequality, which I feel is just a it's kind of a leftover from our past as far as we're, it's, I think we have a male dominated past in society where I guess obviously those ideals and those rules were are embedded into this culture so much to the point that they're still relevant today. So just eliminating that and making us all equal in the workforce, um, building, you know, basing us off of achievements, um, production rather than identity, I guess. And maybe separating identity altogether from the workforce could bring about this. People could even have, instead of the names, just like numbers. Just like. <laughs> sure, I mean, if you get to that point, I mean, that's just, I mean, that's kind of, it seems kind of grim at that point. But um, at, at the same time, I mean, in a perfect world, yes. I mean, if you could just be based on, yeah, this is what you did. I mean, at the same time, it kind of makes you, as, as far as uh, the depersonification of workers, I guess that's another issue that we deal with and everything that might lead to that kind of territory. But at the same time, um, we spend so much of our lives working. We spend a significant part of our time working and we're defined by what we spend our time doing. It's easy for our identities to get wrapped up in the workplace. So some kind of removal from the personal identity to the work identity, maybe that's one way of solving it. I think my only... <clears throat> my only thought regarding that would be I'm trying to think of the most succinct way to say it. You shouldn't have to change your identity to get ahead in the workplace, right? Like you shouldn't have to hide mm -hmm. your gender to just to get more money, right? Like, and that's mm -hmm. sad to think about, but I totally, I honestly, on the flip side of that, I really like your idea specifically like with regards to how, um, like how prevalent pronouns have become and how important pronouns have become in today's society in, in general. Um, I would love for all workplaces to accept a they, them pronoun 
you know, just across the board, everyone refers to each other as they or them, not as he or she, you know, just to, to not assume, just to keep it even. Even if that was just, I guess, just a kind of generic professional tone, in, in the idealistic sense, I would hope that we would be able to retain our identities in the workplace and still be equal, you know, but it's just kind of one of those but things. Assuming, that, right. Assuming that you can't, then that's. Perhaps in the grind, in the grind force and the grindhouse that is like corporate America or like maybe even like levels of, you know, maybe those, especially those injury levels and like that, maybe that's, that's just part of it, you know? So as far so, as like you, maybe you just are at employee number, like Tyler said, and, but at the same time, you don't get any saving graces from your identity, but I don't think you can be penalized necessarily for it either. What if, this is like a what if in that situation, what if we find that if it's just based on like key performance indicators or just a metric system where we're measuring performance and, and what you're bringing to the table, right. Of, of how beneficial you are to a company in general is going to be what determines how you move forward. For sure. That, it, the that, it, that yeah. it's still divided because I think and this is just me thinking based off of a lot of studies out there, obviously I can't name a specific one, but the characteristics uh, or traits like human attributes that make people successful in business are typically more male traits, right? As far as men are traditionally more less nurturing than women. Right. More and, and for sure. yeah and have more <laughs> are more so less nurturing than women and but that's also i think that comes from a cultural that it's been just embedded in us like you said because over time men were the breadwinners right if you think that i think back to the 50s like a, a woman was supposed to be the, the housewife and the man was supposed to go to work so those are sort of learned cultural traits right and right. and that's and, why there's so many or so few female CEOs. Right. That are, you know, even not even gender, but like people of color. So you kind of have to be a dick to get to that level. And you kind of have to be ruthless and not care what people think. And I, I, I think that is culturally, I don't, I don't think it's based in, in gender or DNA, but I think that's a, a cultural thing of how men are Very raised American. and how women, women are raised. Yes. Um, and so you would still have this problem maybe though of, of inequality in, in the workplace. Right. Yeah. You, you believe that. Oh, she's, I, I just think that in, um, as far as like, especially like right now, so like you said, so generally women would be more nurturing and have these things that would be negative against their, I guess, negative attributes in a pure business sense. If you took, yeah you think that if you took the most let's say business sense man and business sense woman and paired them up against each other as far as you think one would be more successful as one would be as far as in the pure business sense, not really like what's yeah. more, what's more paid more, more likely or anything like that. But as far as you think they would be equal in being able in as far as ability. Ab absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind but of what I, I feel just, like. I, I just, just yeah. think that the majority of, of people with that level of business sense are going to be men. Oh, it's been a true, absolutely. Yeah. The tradition absolutely makes the majority of men. Exactly. You know, as far as like, and women, just because from a tradition, I mean, we're, we talk about the modern age. I mean, what's the modern age really? I mean, it's like 2020, like 40 years ago, it was an entirely different world than, you know, it is 20 years ago. You know, so it's just, uh, you know, so, but, but I just think that we've gotten to the point, you know, where, people are you know we're we have you know as far as you, they may be you may consider them outliers now or you know i guess or they definitely be outliers i guess you know 20 years ago or so but as far as like these women in the business world i think they're as far as they can be just as whatever you say was a strong business street ruthless you know um uncaring we've seen you know many of the uh, you know stories of uh, female CEOs that are rising to success nowadays and there's tons of you know success as far as in the world nowadays and they and they're just as they're i wouldn't say just as many because probably not as popular just because of the sheer number but as far as they there are the stories of the bad yeah. female ceos and the bad seniors that have all these kind of same problems that you deal with other men at the same level so i think there's a 
we're getting to the point where I guess we're not being constricted by those traditional roles and we're kind of being people, like you kind of said, people are just kind of, no matter if this identity crisis gets figured out or not, people are going to continue doing their own thing no matter what. And you're going to have the women that are going to go be successful, whether or not there's gender inequality in society at large or not. Yeah. And, and I do think that if, if that were the case where gender was taken out of the workplace to some degree, that people or females that would have normally been shut out, even if they do have the qualification in those traits in order to be successful, would have more of an opportunity to be successful. But I don't, I don't think that that necessarily, like those attributes is what makes you a successful business person. But in the current model that we have, that's how those people rise to the top. So maybe in, in your idea, actually we would have better business across the board because more people with more, more empathy um, or, or the ability to sympathize with people would rise to the top in those situations because they wouldn't be um, ruled out based on their personality. It would be based on their performance only. So I think to that point, I feel like you might be giving the system too much credit because if, if everyone who got to where they are based on their skills, if that were the case, like if every single person who's in an executive position only got there by their, got to that position strictly because of their skills, I would be very, very surprised if it wasn't like 99% due to who they knew, what family they're in or how much money they have. Because That's, people would work the system and be like, Oh, okay. Well, you know me. Yeah. Even though it says this exactly. on paper. Yeah. You know and that's me. like a huge problem in the corporate world, no matter what country it is. So I think that, you know, and that's not even gender at that point. That's just like nepotism, <laughs> essentially sure, yeah. right? favoritism. Yeah. Um, I think that that's a huge, huge issue as to why we have such vast inequality, not even again, not related to gender, but in like, you can go back to the communist sort of look at the proletariat and the bourgeoisie, right? Like all the people who know each other who are rich are going to try to keep all their money together and not give it to the poor people. So somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, and then you have this company and then who are you going to let be your person who works underneath you, your family, your friends, your people. No, so then I, all this money just no. like stays at the top. Oh, yeah. And it's not based on skills, you know, that, that, that's assuming a lot of stuff and not having a lot of um, grounds to back it up. But my understanding is that that's how a lot of the corporate world works, yeah. unfortunately, because it should be a meritocracy. CEOs could be elected. Aren't they? Aren't they usually but not, I think, I think, I think more, theory, I mean, yeah, a lot of, more, yeah, more of a democracy where they aren't the one, like they're not being voted on by a group of their peers. Mm. Oh, I see. Like more of a, like an unbiased, like, like the company. Yeah. You don't pick a group of your friends to let yeah. you be boss essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's moving into kind of like business ethics, but then you get into the problem. Like, I don't know how you get that out of, how do you take that out of people? I think people always will, you're, you will always be inclined to help your friend, even if it's not a, I mean, cause you can think of the dubious situation where it's like, Oh yeah, you I'm promoting my friend or anything like that. But then it's like almost, as subtle as just helping your friend with a reference or something like that, you know, is that where do you draw the line of help on that? And then, so it's like, it's kind of hard to find something that's flexible with human nature as far as that works with like corporate morals. Cause like you said, you, you I kind of agree with you, you know, that like you give the system way too much credit. There's way, cause it's never going to be just perfectly like, Oh, you did, you know, you got two stars and this person got one star. So congratulations, you go to the next level because however, whatever it's based on, whether it's those, you know, it's production performance or just those stars, somebody's going to find a way how to get rig the system to get, they get stars. And they, like you said, they can keep the stars and they can give their stars to whoever they want. And it's going to be their friends, the people they know. And somehow, some way it's going to be unfair in some form right. or fashion. And so regulating that is hard. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how you would. I think, the only way to do it is similar to like what Tyler's saying, where there's like an un, almost like a jury, like an unbiased, like panel of economists or something that determine who is the best suited for a position that's also in the best interest of the company that they're going to be working for. Like there's an AI. Right. Like 
Thank something you. to like get rid of any sort of human nature or like personality human based things and just look at the logic of it right like what's this person's you know this is kind of getting back into what i said worth. last time yeah but like worth and value right or like skills versus like quantifying that i don't know i think i think we're describing how god lets people into heaven or hell <laughs> probably yeah. i mean uh, it's just like wow it's just, you gotta be so if we if we created an ai that would go through that and determine everybody's worth and determine who moves up that would be our god because yeah. everybody like would be trying play. to please it yeah i can go next if you want hayden uh tell everyone about your uh costume change <laughs> so i'm super fucking vain uh it was so wrinkly <laughs> It was so wrinkly, I couldn't stand it anymore. And you guys synchronized. You didn't tell me that, oh, we're wearing black. So I was like, I'm going to do the opposite, and I'm going to wear I'm wearing a shirt, gray. black bones. Sweater. Yeah, gray, yeah. technically. All right, so how to solve wage inequality. I think it comes down to money is the root of it all, right? Because it's this pursuit of money that is in, in power that's going to make people do unethical things. Just like Cutter's situation where despite what you implement, it's not a perfect system, so people are still going to find a way to cheat it, and the reason for that is because they want more money, they want more wealth, they want more power. So I have a five-step process. Step one, get rid of money. Just, just get rid of it. Burn it, throw it away, do it. it's worthless doesn't matter doesn't mean anything it has no actual value anymore we don't use it you can't buy anything with money step two implement a barter system right and step three create some sort of token um, to mark a trade it could be like a a rock or a seashell and you trade that for goods to be money <laughs> I was gonna say, like money, you could sorry. use some sort of paper or <laughs> like, like a, a check, like a coin, <laughs> yeah. And you could write on there, like or bills. This is worth this much, and I'm gonna give this to you. Not for money. your for your work, but it's not called this money. Is not legal tender. We can we can call it something else, like uh, nummy. Tyler's I mean, nummy. <laughs> 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 like Tyler Bills or something. Yeah. Tyler Bucks. <laughs> Tyler Tyler Bills. Uh oh my god. <laughs> step four. This isn't really a step. This is just like a, a latent three. function of step three. Uh but the more tokens you get, the more powerful you become. Motherfucker. Right? <laughs> because <laughs> like if you have more tokens, then you can just do more things. And right. and you can you can barter for more things. And, and because that, people are going to look to you and they're going to want something from you so that you can exchange um, some of your, your tokens for work or anything like that in order to get them to do something for you. And, and that's the barter system, right? And then uh, step five, really, again, just a, a result of step three and four is whoever has the most tokens at the end wins. Okay, when is the end? Uh, when just... <laughs> <laughs> the end of the day? Is it when... a daily <laughs> yeah, it's a daily thing. It starts over every single day. So it's okay. like a, a trading up. You know, Do you, you start understand the, the amount of murders that that would cause? <laughs> hey, question. In no a, more in than money... are murdered over money. That's true. That's true. Yeah. In a money V2 or whatever you call it, um, <laughs> Do how much do women get paid versus men? <laughs> See, that's the thing. This is where I fix the inequality, the gender inequality, Jeez. is the same amount. Perfect. Wow. But it How just de it just depends on people if they value what the woman can offer versus okay. what the man can offer. Does everyone start with a set amount of tokens? <laughs> no, it's just kind of so we'll put a big pile in the middle of the country and just you just like dodgeball everyone runs to the center and just grabs as okay. much as they can cool. no uh everyone starts at the exact same amount okay so and say then, everyone everyone gets 10 tokens and so but every individual determines the worth of what what the tokens are so there's no intrinsic value it's all determined at, in the moment i think 
<laughs> I think that you're misunderstanding what a barter system is. Is because when you're bartering things, you're trading a thing for a thing, not money for a thing. <laughs> you're trading two things. Well, and it's a no little. Yeah, it may not be conventional. It's a little abstract. <laughs> it's different. You know. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> it's a little. He who has the most pants controls the galaxy. <laughs> yeah. Pants. That's what I figured your step yeah. three was going to be is like yeah. implement beans. Like yeah. everyone's collecting beans. 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 That's how you determine. <laughs> and the, I mean, the tokens could be seasonal, you know? Yeah. Like, so yeah, in print. summer, corn. Yeah. I don't They're know when, you, when you harvest corn. I started with step one. I didn't know where I was going. And I just followed the logical chain of events in my mind. Okay, well, get rid of money. Well, then what do we need? Okay, we need some sort of barter system. Okay, well, how do we do that? We trade things for other things, but but that we need some sort of token, money, yeah, to yeah. just mark the transaction or mark the trade. Mm -hmm. But then that becomes the thing of value, and then so it seems like the more of those you have, then the more powerful you become. So. Huh. I guess in conclusion, I didn't. So I just came up with. I just honestly. I just came up with money. That's yeah, all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, but honestly, I think that you have one of the best shots at probably solving wealth inequality because you're just gonna like let's just restart society real fast. Right. Just give it that just idea of like wiping hard slate. restart. Yeah. Just a like clean slate. Right. Hey. But. Anything, and so it like, would the, we would get like back on the bottom this time, you know, like you know, right. Was, so with what we know now, if we restarted the system, how would it naturally build itself back up? Would we notice the things like because it seems like at this point, you know, the companies that are too big to fail, right? Where it doesn't matter what we do, we can't change that. But as we're building that again, do you think we would change it along the way and make it a little better? I think that there would be somebody who wanted to be at the top no matter what it took to stay there, which would then, in theory, think, hmm, name rhymes with Beth Jezos. Um, <laughs> he just sits up at the top of all of his little tokens and coins and whatnot, all of his, his Tyler bucks. Yeah. I don't know. I would, I'd like to be optimistic in a new economic um, restart that it would go better or like unbreakable companies wouldn't form but in the terms of yeah. gender wealth inequality though hey, that's true i mean <laughs> it, it, it could um i'm not saying that it would solve it because you could have it go exactly the way but it could be better than it is now in a in a <laughs> sense it does solve the problem but it creates either another problem or just the same problem but it just resets it just at T zero, just to, yeah. At the it's beginning. kind of like Chuck Palahniuk style, ground zero, just reset, and then rebuild from there. Your dog right. is sick, so you burn the house down. <laughs> 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 I think honestly, one of the biggest problems with that would just be telling everybody, "Hey, burn your money." V bucks. Let's all just go to Fortnite rules, and we all choose V bucks. Oh, God. I haven't invested anything in the Fortnite. That would be a switch in the wealth inequality. All these 12 year olds would be fucking trillionaires. I know. <laughs> oh my God. God. Is that your solution, Hayden? V Bucks? Damn. V -Bucks. Already won. <laughs> he already won. Just erase whatever you have. Yeah. I didn't even create it. It's Epic Games already solved this problem a couple of years ago. <laughs> How many V Bucks no, do you have, Tyler? Don't be embarrassed. Thing. I think I have like <laughs> 200. Just make V Bucks an actual cryptocurrency. Do you think that's possible? Do That'd you think be that, wild. that would come? Well, the, the okay, so you are, you've already played this with Counter Strike and all the the lawsuits and that. So basically, when it comes to a video game economy, you can put money into a video game economy, but you can never ever monetize the money coming out of the video game economy. Oh, I see. It's a real world kind of thing. So Counter Strike did that with skins, and they ran into the issues where they were doing like skin gambles and stuff. You had it where you had these skins that were traded and auctioned and everything with real world money, so they or real world money, so they actually became like valuable over time. You know, you can bet V bucks against V bucks all day long, but you can never cash out your V bucks into the real world. Interesting, Hayden. What's uh, what you got? Um, the main thing that I wrote was just eat the rich. <laughs> Legitimately, I just wrote eat the rich. Oh, yeah. Hey, eat the rich. Um, put them in a stew. No, but, I mean, most of my... Wait, what? 
what is what is rich? Than me. Uh, more than what you have, like a lot more than what you have. I would say like if we you, were to we put quant- a number, quantify right. it. Yeah. I would say like. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough to say. I would say that there's exceptions. So there, there's people, there's rich people who don't contribute to the general where, welfare of society, or they're not like a value add to the like the welfare of everyone in general, right? And those people, like I don't think it's inherently wrong for somebody to have wealth, especially by means that they earned legitimately, yeah, right? Like yeah. that's that was the American dream. You can come here and do whatever and make your money and live your life and you don't have to worry about people bothering you and you can just live your life and that's it. Get a minivan, settle down, have a bunch of kids and die. You know, you could do that if you want. You know, people talk about like offshore bank accounts. I, I, I guess the one, the barrier would be for me, anyone in the 1%, at least okay. for a short amount of time, right? Because once the wealth, assuming that we took all the wealth in the 1% and redistributed it to the, uh, the 99%, then we'd be at a flat curve, right? It wouldn't spike like this mm-hmm. at the 1% in terms of wealth. Everyone would be at an equal level in a perfect world. Um, so once that were the case, or once we're at least like somewhat equalized, then that wouldn't be the thing. But I don't mean just like kill all the rich people. Like that's not necessarily what I mean. I mean, put them at a disadvantage i mean you could if you want <laughs> if, you're, if you're hungry okay. hey you're former trainer jeff bezos oh my god oh, look at him he looked like a snack how are teeth so white they're all fake oh it's awesome <laughs> they're all little mini drones actually <laughs> give me hey, give me a tomato i want to throw one at them yeah <laughs> <laughs> My my overall answer would be to just redistribute wealth. And so ways that you could do that would be to, uh, and, and this should be the case, there should be no tax cuts for any person in the 1% ever at all. That's just not fair. Because no. the amount of wealth that they have outweighs multiple hundreds of people, potentially, that they... You know, it's just not fair. Like, people who who are struggling to pay taxes can't afford like food or rent or a car yeah. or, or to support their families. But then you have gajillionaires who are buying their 10th yacht or whatever, right? Like that's just not fair at all. Um, so increasing taxes on the wealthy, obviously. Um, but more so than that, I would say like reinvest, not just like giving everyone a check, right? Like not the, I don't necessarily want like universal base income for everyone all the time. I don't assume that that'll fix the problem, but I do think that that could be a really good tool to getting reinvestment in like the lower levels of our economy, right? Like poverty level people. If we give them some sort of tax break or increased benefits or some sort of reinvestment in their um, livelihood and in their education or in their anything if we give them somehow hook them up with a good house get them somewhere put them in a position to get a good job put them in a position to like help with mental health there's things that are super overlooked that lead to people's struggles in their lives right like it's not it's hard for people okay so let's focus on mental illness it is exponentially harder for somebody with a mental illness to get a job. So what do we do for them? Somehow give them a form of income or else they won't live. (laughs) Like that's kind of what it boils down to for me, right? Like they just don't have the necessary human requirements to live and thrive. So, and I think that there, you know, there is some social benefit that we have in place everywhere. Right. I just don't think it's enough. You think it could be more because yeah, the 1% are taking more of what we could give them. Yeah. Any money that gets reinvested into the community is a benefit to the economy, right? Like it, in not just national community, but like mm-hmm. where you live, your neighborhood, infrastructure, fixing bridges, telephone, but like, you know, the, the bread and butter stuff of a community just helps the community grow and 
and thrive, right? So I think just re not just redistribute, not just taking all the money from the one percent and distributing it e evenly, but putting it in the places where it's most needed, right? Specifically, focus on like areas with extreme homelessness or with really bad infrastructure, um, Poor, bad things, of, things of that nature. Right, exactly. What I'm going to look something up. What is, because the broken window theory comes to mind and I don't want to miss, misspeak on what it is. Broken window theory is a, this is from Wikipedia. It's a criminal, criminological theory that states that visible signs of crime, antisocial behavior, and civil disorder create an urban environment that encourages further crime and disorder, including serious crimes. This is a very mundane example, but exactly what the theory says. If you, if you fix the windows and buildings in downtown areas, what's it going to hurt? It's not going to necessarily mean that crime is decreased. You know, you can't prove that that's the correlation, but you can, you know, people might start giving a shit about where they live and might not try to break all the things that they have, you know? And I think ultimately, no matter, you know, yes, ideally the wealth being distributed in areas where it's most needed, I think that a lot of people just don't have a lot of hope in a capitalistic society, right? Um, especially when they're not in it, if they're in a place where they feel like they're at, at the end of like inequality, right? If they know that their boss makes six, seven figures, if they're making millions and they're only paying their employees like eight bucks an hour with no insurance, no benefits, no nothing. And they're working full time overtime, sometimes not getting paid time and a half. You know what I mean? Like there's mm -hmm. some situations where employees are so overlooked and so undervalued because they don't know to say, you know, I deserve more. I'm, I'm worth more than this. Mm -hmm. I know you have the means to provide more to your, and reinvest in your labor. You're exploiting our labor. That's the one thing that I can give to the economy other than just like spending money at a bar or going to a restaurant or whatever. We as workers have labor that gets exploited and, you know, and some people are on worse end of that, worse ends of that than others, right? Yeah. Um, women, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they make less than men. So, on so. so I, I think for that, the argument, and again, I'm going to say this, but this is not my argument, but the argument I, I feel like people would make to that solution would be that if we did it, if we did that, if we redistributed the wealth and, and say, just gave it to people, gave them checks, like stimulus checks or something like that, uh, besides just putting it back into the community would be that those people or, or those poor people it would help them maybe for a time, but what's really going to make them change their lifestyle and right. have the ambition and drive in order to perpetuate that. Right. And my answer to that would be they'll, I, I would hope that people would care more about their situation if they felt like they had a voice in it. And if they had say and representation, and more skin in the game feel overlooked and right like felt like if they had something if they felt like they had something to contribute to the community obviously there's always going to be people who don't want to right they're going to do whatever they want to do you can't force them to do anything right yeah. um but i think if you have a community that is being reinvested in and you see that people are can benefit from that or just enjoy it, right? Like if, if it's just a beautification project in a neighborhood or if they fix a stupid pothole around the corner that everybody hates in the neighborhood, you know, like small stuff like that, mm -hmm. that improves their living situation, that might give them a reason to get up in the day. Or maybe it's the person who's been unemployed for months and they're finally in good enough spirits to go kill that interview. You know, it's not anything that's guaranteed, mm -hmm. but it's at least giving them the tool to do and and be be proactive in their situation yeah because somebody else is right it's not just somebody at the at the top of the company saying oh here's your paycheck get out mm -hmm. like you know it's like here we've you know you've paid your taxes for ever for as long as you've lived here right us as americans we just pay taxes that 
yeah. ideally go back into the community. Not always, right? But like here, here's your benefit for that. We're gonna fix that pothole, or we're gonna re- replace all the street lights, or put flat stupid mm-hmm. shit like that. You know, it seems yeah. minuscule, but that kind of reverses the cycle, right? Because if yeah. nobody's doing that, no, it's never gonna get done. So if you start something in motion, hopefully the, the hope is to keep it going. Keep it going. Um, I, I really like the idea of using it for mental health, for mental health care too. Absolutely. Of, yeah. of giving that freely to people. Yeah, it's not uh, again not not free, but setting it up in places like that or um, helping drug addicts right get there who I don't have another option. Um, if we could reinvest the money to right. those types of things also and not just methadone clinics right right you know, not just not just a, getting them hooked on fix, something else you know yeah. right like an actual rehabilitation program and yeah. like career services and not yeah. just like okay here's your methadone for the week go to labor ready and you can get a job for a week and then you'll come back here and do it again and again and again and you'll never improve your situation because it's not really getting that improved it's just being sustained it's unfair for us to assume that somebody doesn't need that we're all employed people, right? I take antidepressants. I, I have a job and I contribute and I pay taxes and shit like that. But it's so, it feels so unfair and unequal to particularly deny that right from somebody else, right? Like just assuming that, oh, well, if they wanted it, they'd get it. Or, you know, oh, well, we, mm-hmm. you know, they, they're they fine. I need it more than them or whatever, whatever mentality you want to have. For somebody who's in a struggling situation, can you imagine what their mental health is like? And can you imagine how hard that must make their living situation? And they're like, that's probably why they're struggling with not holding down a job or keep like going out to find jobs or getting better jobs or getting education, things like that. So I guess the thesis for my idea would be to reinvest in the people who need it um, and reinvest in communities that need it. I think it's actually really, really easy to do that and really easy to know who needs it and what communities need it. And they're, ign- they're largely ignored, right? Because we don't want it to be our problem and we're not even the 1% and they probably don't even see it. I don't know. It's, it's a sad reality um, for me personally, but. but I think even like what, you, what you're saying as far as, the only problem that I always see with the redistribution of wealth, especially from the 1%, is that those 1% will always fight tooth and nail to keep whatever of their 1% they can, and it's almost always impossible to take it away. But I really enjoy your idea of the reinvestment of community. You know, it reminds me of, like, I, it kind of takes me back to, like, thinking of, it's goofy, but it's like kind of like World War II America or something like that. Like, the idea of, yeah. like, these people investing in their community – I wish we had a modern version of that because I feel like especially our generation, everything, that's what the America, as far as not, I mean, not whether it's the real America or whether it's the true America that is actually in the world or anything, but the media, and I don't even say media is the right word, but as far as and it, maybe, maybe the propagandized America that we've been fed our entire lives is that we are, you know, the land of the free, accept everyone, take in everyone. Um, but as far as, but once you're in America, you know, you're like, you're American and we're, we have this very idea of com- building a community together. I mean, as far as that's kind of like a, that, that community building is almost a very American ideal. Like, you know, you're, you're, it doesn't, you know, cause everyone has all kinds of different backgrounds. We're, we're very, we're not very homogenic as far as uh, mm-hmm. culture wise anymore. We're all in the same area, but we're not really like, I don't know my neighbors. And I don't think anyone like, you know, necessarily knows their neighbors other than like rural communities or like suburban neighborhoods, maybe. And I think you're kind of lucky if you do, Mm -hmm. especially like apartment complexes or any kind of like modern living situation. Yeah. I don't 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 know my neighbors. It's it's hard to have a sense of community in a situation like that. And I wish there was kind of a return kind of to that to where people cared about the community. Because I think, a lot of the problems that we have kind of stem out of the disconnection from community. We talk about, I mean, everyone complains about like politics and political leaders and everything like that. I mean, but a lot of that begins with who you elect from local things. And I think, I think to tell you the honest truth, I don't know my local politicians in Fort Worth because I don't really think that, you know, I don't, I can't think of what they could really, you know, what 
I don't how really, they affect I think, your day to day. Yeah, how they affect my day to day. Yeah, exactly. And it's just you know, as far as I'm sure they it matters, and I'm sure you know it, I'm probably idiotic for thinking that, but at the same time, it's not advertised or given to me information anywhere. I would have to go and search to find that information. I mean, I don't know if it's a patriotism or a nationalism kind of thing or what it would be, but it's just a, a sense that you take care of your local community of some way to be connected to it and want to see that grow, you know, and so it be right. in somewhat invested into it and feel invested into it. Yeah. It's, I, I think it is, it's caring about your surroundings and it makes, I really, it makes me think of uh, parks and rec where Leslie just want her whole idea. She wants to fill in the pit, you know, she wants to bring community together and, and have this, and that's local government. And I think that it actually would, if we paid attention to that and, and there was, was a redistribution of wealth that it would trickle down in local government. You would have people in there. If you paid attention to who you elected or who was in office that would do meaningful and important things with that wealth. And, and so it's like a trickle, <laughs> trickle down economics, but basically Which it totally works right yeah but so you you it's just like for schools right so the state government allots a certain amount of money every year for schools it's not like a superintendent has an unlimited bucket of money that they can just go in and grab money out of because the superintendent gets it then they divvy up that budget among the schools in the district and then the principals decide okay well what do we do with this budget but they only get so much. And so the principal has to decide, okay, well, we got food for the cafeteria. We have school buses, nurses, janitors, books for the library, all of this stuff. We have to pay the electric bill. And then teachers get a, you know, a small portion of that. But even through that, that system, if the government did a lot more money, because if they had more money of, of taxing the rich more or the 1% more, I mean, that's a lot of money and that money goes a long way. And so it would find its way down and there would be a lot of positive improvements in, yeah. in the community. And the 1% wouldn't be that worse off. Like they no. make astronomical they can, amounts of money. They can pay their it fucking doesn't. taxes. Yeah. <laughs> right. And our president won't release his tax returns still. So. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not get political. Let's not right? get. Whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, whoa. Well, I, mean, I guess we, we, we all talk about like trickle down economics is like that how that works but maybe honestly it's like trying to keep your money from going up there's a reason that those one percent stay at the one percent and yeah. they're it's actually true. i mean and, they, and actually those people i mean they in every case they they fortify their economic position whether it be like through economic policy through political power in mean, some kind of way to where they will keep themselves in the circulation um Keeping what if, the money in the hands of like I guess like you said like in middle I, I don't know, I, I like to think of middle America because like you like you said um you're never going to be able to improve everybody in the situation there's going to be people who are always going to be just do nothing they're going to live yeah. society and do what they want and frankly in America I don't think that you should force those people to have to be productive or forced nope. to do anything they're allowed to I mean that's that's the right that's the best part about being here is that you can get to yeah. and so but for the producers and the people that are contributing to society and like that. They deserve to have it a little more, in my personal opinion. Absolutely. But with that, I think that I think with having that economic power, whatever it is, it's easy to lose sight of. Okay, I worked in hard and I earned this. This is mine. It's hard to let that go. But I think there kind of is a responsibility to reinvest in your community, reinvest yeah. where you are, because I mean every example of that. Like you said, it's it contributes. It's not going to fix everything. I mean, you throw money at some problems and it's just never going to fix itself, but there are improvements. There are going to be the people that, who, that there is potential that I think we lose from people who don't have a chance and people who don't Absolutely. get that one step and they can make the rest of, they can make it the rest of the way if they can just get that one chance. And I think that everybody gets a chance. It's um, in America, especially especially like in that propagandized version, everybody gets a chance in America. And that's what we've always told everyone forever. In reality, that's not, everyone gets a chance, but it's not the same chance. It's not the mm -hmm. fair chance. Yeah. Kyle at his, yeah. you know, Kyle at his father's company, he's going to have way better chance of making six years a year than a person who's just first generation college student. That's just letting facts in life. Um, 
you'd have to fix, you know, a thousand problems, I guess, to fix all the inequality and debt. But yeah. to re-contribute this idea of this, like, I guess, American idea of, like, reinvesting in your community, building up your community, being proud of this location, this town, wherever you are, and caring about your politics, you know, getting involved, and then caring about, um, you know, having the responsibility to re-contribute into your society, knowing and I guess knowing and kind of having faith that it's going to pay back off in some way to you and prove where you are. That's a really big point. I think that's why a lot of people don't like paying taxes is because they just assume that their taxes are going to somebody who doesn't deserve it, who's just manipulating the system, who's just taking benefits and not doing anything to improve their situation, which wouldn't be the case if they didn't have to use that. Like if they had more money, if, if like lower income people had more money to use, I bet you a lot of them would do their fix their situation pretty damn quick. They don't want to live the way they do, but they have to take benefits where they can get them. Right. Like, yeah. So for you to not want to pay taxes is so, so unfair to everyone else. That's like your neighbors, dude. Like, yeah, I think, I think if one, they had to pay taxes, but also if we put a cap on what people could make like jeff bezos you don't need i can't even fathom a trillion dollars no one needs a trillion dollars what the fuck can you do with a trillion dollars what can you do with a billion i i can't imagine there's way more money a lot of problems but if we if we put a cap on it to where after that any any money that you make just flows back in into the community and people would say well okay hold on that's not the american dream you're you're encroaching on people's rights but no, it's so easy to do. Look what happened with coronavirus when they said immediately, okay, no, you can only buy one thing of toilet paper because everybody else needs it or one paper towel. It's the yeah. same exact concept of we're all in this together. And maybe when America, the American dream first started, that, that was achievable. Okay, you can get as much as you want, but that's not the reality that we live in anymore. It's, it's been exploited it's not way realistic. Exactly. And so there have to be amendments and have to be changes made. And I, I think capping somebody at a billion dollars is reasonable because unless they're already contributing a lot to yeah, benefit, general yeah, welfare of the society, absolutely. I totally agree. And there's where you run into the problem of who decides that cap. You have to put, right. you know, you yeah. Vessels can, I guarantee yeah. if you had some kind of thing that you had to put on restriction on Bezos, you would had the report of why he generates this much. Yeah. I mean, because you could, I mean, he pro- some weird economic way, I'm sure he generates more money than he actually is worth. But you can at least change the average American's idea of how they deal with people like Jeff Bezos, how they deal with companies like Amazon. By make, I think it's easier to make Jeff Bezos unpopular than it is to put some kind of restriction where you're getting his money. Oh, so if you were to put some ironclad way to take Jeff Bezos' money and really put it into a system where we could redistribute it he would leave and go to another country i guess as far as you think if you think of it like as far as pure wealth going back into our communities and everything well it would be gone you know so yeah that's what i got <laughs> yeah. i feel like y'all added a lot to solved it. i'm yeah I'm solved better. i'm gonna i'm gonna vote hayden on this one i'm gonna vote cutter i like it you can vote for yeah, yourself. I'm going to vote, vote, vote Tyler. <laughs> Ground zero, just to see what the fuck happens. Fucking Tyler Bucks, V-Bucks. I was, I was thinking, yeah, I mean, like, I think restarting societies is as good a chance of any. The, the T-Bucks, man. Yeah, true. Yeah. All right, hey, so we all tie. Everybody gets one. Oh, see? One. See? Everybody's oh, equal. Hey, we <laughs> saw it. We saw it. <laughs> Holy, look at that. Yeah, we did it. Like, we did it. Yeah, if you're listening to us, you probably have nothing better to do, you idiot. It's true. <laughs> See, some guys just like that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to do an outro. I don't know. Uh... I just do that and put our spinning head logos and just do like. <laughs>